Hi there, my name is Kathleen Leyland, and I'm the managing editor of Green Profit. Uh, I'd like to thank Mashala for inviting me to speak with you today. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't be there in person, and I would have liked to have done this recording live, but uh, I'm in Morocco, and I'll be on a train when you are watching this. So, uh, Anyhow, Mashallah asked me to talk about environmental issues in the United Arab Emirates. I've, I spent some time there, and I've been studying uh, the UAE for some time. And, and then they asked me to discuss what I think that the media can do to make a difference and to address some of these issues. Uh, in the interest of time, I decided to focus specifically on water. Uh, I think that uh, not only do the Gulf countries have a lot of um, challenges ahead of them, well, actually, current challenges and future challenges, but uh, I think water is a, a challenge that North Africa and the Middle East all share. So uh, we'll, we'll focus on that, and then, and then we'll head into what I think we can do to make a difference. So, uh, I guess the, the real problem in the Gulf countries is just a lack of freshwater resources. And uh, Abu Dhabi, for example, uh, relies very, very heavily on desalinated water, so does Dubai and, and the other Emirates. And desalination is a wonderful technology that has enabled uh, Gulf countries to maintain some kind of decent water supply, but it's also very energy intensive. Um, for example, uh, the fourth largest uh, desalination plant in the world is in Abu Dhabi, is in, is in the UAE, called Jebel Ali. And it uh, processes about 140 million gallons of water every day and requires about 4,000 kilowatt hours of energy to process one acre foot of water. So what does that mean? Essentially, for one acre foot of water, we're using uh, about the amount of energy that the average consumes, that the average home consumes in a year uh, for one acre foot of water. So a lot of energy is very, very energy intensive to, to separate the salt from the water to make it fit for human consumption. Um, so it may seem like Abu Dhabi can afford this, but that's not the case because even if there's oil today, number one, they won't all be the oil, and number two, Abu Dhabi relies very heavily on their uh, oil exports for their local economy. The local economy depends on oil, so the everybody understands now that uh, it's very necessary in the United Arab Emirates of Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Saudi Arabia, Oman. It's very necessary in the Gulf countries to um, to conserve to conserve what what water and energy resources are available, since the two go hand in hand. Of course, uh, the water problems in Jordan, for example, and Syria are very different uh, because they have some fresh water resources, but the fresh water resources that they do have are very badly degraded, or they cross borders, and uh, there's a political problem. Many analysts are very concerned that uh, the next couple of decades we'll see water wars. We will see many environmental refugees, and uh, unfortunately, uh, it's very difficult for us to communicate this to the average person. But uh, that's that's what we're here to discuss at the moment. Um, look, I think uh, one of the very first things I think that it's necessary to do is to to, to understand environmental issues in their proper context, in their cultural and geographical context. So, for example, uh, I'm an American citizen, and I don't think it's helpful for me to come to the Middle East as a writer and to enforce my ideas based on my culture. Um, I think that it's necessary as journalists to, to foot it, 
to what I call foot it to get on the ground and to talk to local people and visit local villages and cities and towns and government officials and and researchers and uh, really really analyze the uh, environmental problems in their specific context so a perfect example of that would be biking you know in the United States we promote uh, bicycles as an alternative to driving but in the Middle East that's not always possible for example I was in Abu Dhabi in Dubai in May and it was so hot there's no way you could uh, ask people to go biking in the middle of the afternoon uh, in August uh, it wouldn't be healthy and it certainly wouldn't be sustainable. So uh, we have to find alternative solutions and of course in terms of transportation that could well be uh, the metro station. Anyhow, so I, th I, think that's, I think that's important, number one. Number two, I think uh, it's, it's, uh, there has been a culture in the media that, it's been, it hasn't been so inclusive. I think uh, many journalists have uh, relied on press releases for their information. I think environmental awareness in general is not so advanced. And so, uh, and, and sometimes it's not always easy to find data to back up our assertion. So the environmental reporting uh, movement is still quite young and immature. So I think it's very important that uh, independent uh, news media such as Mashallah, Green Prophet, uh, a whole host of other really wonderful journalists throughout the Middle East are doing some wonderful work. I think it's important that we give them our support and, uh, and that we facilitate more discussion with researchers, for example, so that we can have relevant data. You know, as a, as a journalist, we think of uh, um, non-profit organizations that are releasing reports that pertain to the Middle East that would be helpful, uh, helpful data for the Middle East. And uh, we don't have so much of that yet, but we're getting there. We have the Gulf Research Center and, and uh, Mazdar in the United Arab Emirates and Kaos in Saudi Arabia. All these different organizations, all these different uh, research organizations are, are starting to get off the ground, but we also need grassroots, um, we need grassroots uh, investigating as well. And, um, and I think it's important that we don't accept the old formula. You know, environmental issues in our region, well, all over, but in our region in particular, are so urgent. And when I was going through school, we were encouraged not to not to use emotive language, and we were encouraged to stay very fair and balanced, which I, I think is rel relevant and important. But I think that if we want to move people to action, we, we need to not be afraid to be a little bit passionate, and we need to not be afraid to break out of the sort of formulaic journalism uh, that we've seen in the last couple of decades. Of course, social media has changed that and has made it more social and more inclusive and more participatory, and I think that's a really, really important step in the right direction for the Middle East. Uh, we just have to harness it the right way. And finally, I would like to say that uh, it's not helpful if we sort of moan about the horrible statistics uh, without enabling our readers and our viewers to take action, to take positive, constructive action. I think as a journalist, it's important to present the facts and to do so in a balanced way, but to convey the urgency and then to enable uh, solutions and, and to enable our readers to feel empowered to, to, to make some changes in their lives and, and hopefully become more civically and uh, publicly engaged. So I, I, I guess my time is up. I'd like to thank you again and uh, please email me if you have any questions or if you would like to talk to me some more. Uh, you can reach me at tafp 
L I N E at greenprofit, P R O P H E T dot com. Thank you.